Good afternoon, Art Attackers. I thought this week for the video I would uh, do a demonstration of the eco printing with uh, iron that I was telling you guys about. So I have um, soaked some pieces of fleece in water. I'm just going to put these down on this Teflon mat that I was telling you guys about. Here's my watercolor paper. I did soak this for a little while in a little bit of water and vinegar. This is a piece of fleece that has uh, homemade iron water poured onto the piece of fleece. So I'm just dipping, you know, kind of like stamping the leaves into that. These have been sitting in the refrigerator for, oh gosh, Heidi, what was that, a week ago, two weeks ago? So they've been sitting in the fridge for a little bit. So I'm not sure how they're going to print, to be honest with you. But we're going to give it a Girl Scout try here. There's another one. Here's one more. Okay, so I'm just pushing this into the fleece and getting some of the iron solution on the leaves. And I have some of her beautiful Aussie pine. And I'm just going to kind of sprinkle those down however they want to go. And then I did, I uh, dyed some lace and some gauze for my carrier blanket. Okay, so here is, uh, again, I've got my sandwich with my two pieces of fleece. And I'm going to put my carrier blanket on top. This was dyed with fiber reactive Dharma uh, bright orange. And I'm going to put two more pieces of wet felt on top. There's my sandwich. Here's my second piece of Teflon. I have my iron set to cotton. I'm going to take my phone and set it to four minutes. And we're going to see the magic. And I'm really pressing. Let that cool off for a second. You can see the steam just flying off of that. <laughs> oh, I think the orange worked. Just going to grab these pieces of fleece and put them right in the water bucket. Yeah, I'm thinking uh, maybe I should have waited a little bit longer. Wow, that's fun, isn't it? I really, really like how that orange transferred. And uh, <laughs> the red edible hibiscus, it blushed purple. Usually blushes blue, but I tell you, I, um, I poured some homemade iron water directly. I didn't even dilute it. It went directly from the... Uh, bottle into the onto my little foam tray and I have a feeling that that's why it's so pronounced but I'm oh my gosh I absolutely love that so C actually has a heat press and when I told her that I was experimenting with all this she said oh well you know would you like to try my heat press I'm like oh my god are you kidding so guess what that's what we're going to do next so stay tuned so this is C's heat press I'm warming it up right now I'm going to take it up to 330 degrees and we're going to hold it for 243 seconds. We're going to take two of our pieces of uh, fleece. And we're going to lay them down. We're going to put our watercolor paper on top of that. And then we're going to start putting our leaves on. So again, I have my piece of fleece inside my foam tray. 
and I'm just going to take the stems of these off. I'm using the back side of the leaf. I'm going to put one there and I'm going to put one here. This is going to be a very simple print. I'm going to put my blue over the top. Yeah, sizzle, sizzle. Okay, then I'm going to put my other two pieces of fleece on the top. One. Two. I'm going to put one more right here. And then I'm going to add my second piece of Teflon. Okay, so we're going to bring this over. I'm at 330. And I'm just going to clamp it down. Boy, I can hear that thing sizzling. And I'm just, I'm not trying to close it, I'm just pressing down on the top. It's probably really exciting, isn't it, watching? I'm just going to turn it off and then we'll, we'll see the results, okay? Yeah, you can see the steam rising, so I'm thinking if we stop seeing steam, we'll know we're out of moisture. And all we have to do is swing the top away and uh, spray it, spritz it with a spray bottle. Alright, our time's up, so we're going to pick it up. Carefully swing it out of the way. or something. Four minutes. Okay, now I'm going to do a big one. Wow! <laughs> this is so fun. Okay, there you have it. Four minutes. How fun is that? Okay, so we're going to try another one. Can you see that? Wow, wow, wow. I've gotten greedy. I'm going to try to do a larger one. I've cut some fleece that's a little bit bigger and uh, got it a little bit wetter. Okay, we're going to go ahead and turn that off. I did not get up to temperature. It only got up to about 274, so this might not be... Might not be good enough. We're going to roll that out of the way. Holy shoot. Holy colors, Batman. Oh, yeah, those puppies are hot. Oh, wow. Yeah, I might, I might need some tongs. Oof, baby. Okay, this one had a piece of uh, gauze. <laughs> okay, I'm not sure the leaves turned at all. I just got to, yeah, I just got to resist. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of fun. I have a feeling it's... Um, I didn't get the temperature, so that might have something to do with it. These are old, moldy leaves that were in the refrigerator. But, honestly, that is still tons of fun. Whew, tons of fun, especially, especially where those uh, ginkgos are down there. Tons of fun. I'm going to try this again one more time. Okay, I'm building a ginkgo sandwich. 
and I, I kind of, you know what, I, I'm, I would kind of like to have some purple here. So I'm going to put purple here, and then maybe put the yellow over the top, like that. All right, and then we're going to add these two to the top. I'm just going to go ahead and add these guys for a little extra hydration. I'm going to put this over the top, everything nice and flat. Bring this over. Drop it down. Turn on the timer. I don't know why it's dropping. So these all were done using the iron and the Teflon sheets. Just really love the red edible hibiscus with the Australian pine. This is the cochineal bugs. My famous line, you know how many bugs died for this? Yeah. Uh, these were all done with the iron. These were all done with the heat press uh, and using the carrier blankets. Really like how they came out. This one was actually done uh, with the iron, and I really, really like how that one came out. Um, this was done on the on the heat press with the with the different carrier blankets. I am going to try um, to do some heat press on fabric today and if the video is not too long I'll get it in there if the video is really really long then I'll save that for uh, next week here is a collection of some of the various fabrics I've gone ahead and dyed for my carrier blankets I'm using the Dharma fiber reactive this comes in a powder and they have lots of colors um, using doilies, lace, this is gauze, um, this is a uh, interfacing, Pellon interfacing that's not fusible, I actually cut it into shapes. These were really fun yesterday, I'd cut them into shapes and the colors kind of blended. Uh, more doilies, this is burlap which I really really like how that came out. Here's a doily my mom made years ago and I had done it in yellow yesterday wasn't wild about how the yellow came out, so I put this in the blue, and it came out a really pretty green. So the nice thing about these fiber reactive dyes is that if you, you're not adding anything, there's no fixatives, you're not adding anything to fix the dye to the fabric. So it will keep for a really long time. It doesn't have a shelf life. It might have a shelf life, but it, it keeps a really, really long time. And then I'm just pouring them in the tubs, and, uh, and adding the fabric until it's completely saturated. So it really doesn't take a lot of water. And, you know, because you can store them, uh, you get a lot of bang for your buck. This piece of paper was underneath the heat press. I was trying to capture the moisture as it uh, came off the heat press. So um, <laughs> I'm saving it because I think it's kind of cool. So let's talk about, let's talk about this. Uh, once you have these beautiful prints, in these areas where I have the um, negative space, um, I'm probably going to add some stuff. I'll probably maybe even do some jelly plate work. I might put some writing in here. I might use some of the, uh, the gold leaf. I'm not sure what I'm going to do, but I'm definitely going to add another layer to these prints uh, to try to enhance them. It'd be a good discussion. Let's have that discussion now. I finished my beach scene from last week. I put some of my crepe myrtle skins on the bottom. I made it look like driftwood. I love that. And then here's a jelly plate piece that I did and I actually cut and wove into it. I kind of I kind of dig that. So my jelly plate's coming in today. I have a feeling that's going to be next week's topic.